We created a pink wave at theaters over the weekend, but what do you really know about the history of the famous doll? It certainly inspired generations of girls to dream big. And as I found out, it took some very hardworking women to make it happen. This is the fashion that got me hired at Mattel. Take a walk through Carol Spencer's home. I have over 350. You have more than 350 Barbie dolls. In this room alone. And you just might think you're in Barbie's dream house. That's my first design that was accepted for the line. Spencer, a spry 90 years old, spent 35 years as a Barbie fashion designer at Mattel. It's really a wonderful feeling. I think of every child that played with the Barbie doll as my child. The very first Dr. Barbie in 1973 was her vision. Most of the doctors, surgeons at that time were all men. And as long as we were exploring careers for a child, I thought, why not? Did you even at the time realize what impact Barbie would have on children? No. No, I, I didn't realize it at all. Barbie, you're beautiful. Since bursting onto the scene in 1959, Barbie has given kids the chance to dream about their futures. I'm going to be a doctor just like you. Having more than 250 careers. She was flying through outer space as an astronaut 18 years before Sally Ride made the trip. The Barbie dream while living a life of style. This independent, strong female role model in Barbie that owned her own house, and not only that, was rocking millions of careers. Lisa McKnight is the executive vice president and global head of Barbie at Mattel. That was really progressive at that time. It was very progressive at that time, and you think about the context of the 1950s, women couldn't even cash their own checks. While many toys for girls at the time focused on caring for children, Mattel co-founder Ruth Handler saw opportunity. She was the one who was the sales genius, the marketing genius. Biographer Robin Gerber says Handler tapped into a feminist movement. Little girls were asking for other kinds of Barbies. Well, they started to want Barbies who actually had careers, and that has, of course, blossomed to everything you could think of. By the 90s, the New York Times calculated 95% of all American girls ages 3 to 11 had at least one Barbie. <laughs> Barbie. And she appeared everywhere from movies to music videos. But over the years, Mattel has addressed criticism that the doll was sometimes out of touch or contributing to unrealistic beauty standards, especially after a 2016 study found that young girls who played with the traditional Barbie doll had more dissatisfaction with their bodies than girls who played with curvier dolls. We were hearing playback from parents and focus groups that they didn't see Barbie as a role model. There wasn't a lot of depth behind the brand. Barbie's creators made efforts to expand her reach, unveiling dolls of different races, body shapes, and sizes. Barbie has had such an evolution. I can't help but notice right away, wheelchair Barbie. Yes, we are so proud of that doll. It's so important for kids to see themselves in the doll and to have that representation. But also, it's really important for kids at a young age to learn about empathy. Oh! And at the World of Barbie in Santa Monica, California. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Love is fantastic, fantastic. You can see the empathy and inspiration on full display. I found an astronaut. Yay, that's me. I'm going to be an astronaut when I grow up. These are by different country Barbies. They are. Well, she's going to continue changing as we change. Carol Spencer, who spent decades bringing Barbie to life, knows the doll's impact will continue for generations. You know, Ruth Handler said at one point after she left Mattel, it's amazing how so many different children love Barbie in many different ways. What are those different ways? Some love playing with the doll as for the careers. So many people love her for her fashion. Mm -hmm. We have you to thank for that. Well, thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed it.
And that was what was so fun seeing the movie yesterday is that Carol was about, once she finished our interview, she was going with a group of friends and she said before she left, oh, I hope they use some of my outfits in the movie. And when I was watching yesterday, I was like, that's one of her outfits, that's one of her outfits. So she, she had a that's lot of amazing. There. You know, and I think that this messaging of like women can be anything and really this feminist movement that's being re-embraced by Barbie is surprising to some people because of those unrealistic standards. That's true. Um, of beauty. So, and it's interesting to see how it's evolved over the course of the years. And they really are trying now. It's, it's interesting. So like wheelchair Barbie or prosthetic uh, leg Barbie, they've gone to people who have the disabilities and say, what makes it more realistic? How can we tweak it? How can we, because they really do want everyone to understand what everybody goes through. And they're trying to match as many different uh, skin tones mm -hmm. to the coloring of Barbie. So even yeah. just from a business perspective, yeah. it makes sense, right? It to be inclusive. Absolutely. Great story. Thanks. So interesting.